Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Berta. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And a wonderful, happy, blessed New Year to you. We pray in this Mass that the Lord will be with you and your family, your friends, and to bless you with all the, the blessings that you need in this coming year. We bring to Him our needs, needs for blessings, our need for healing, our need for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest and, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron and his sons, Thus you shall bless the sons of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the sons of Israel, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. O God, be gracious and bless us. O God, be gracious and bless us. O God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, and all nations learn your salvation. O God, God, be gracious and bless us. Let the nations be glad and shout for joy. 
With uprightness, you rule the peoples. You guide the nations on earth. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us his blessing, that all the ends of the earth may revere him. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So through God, you are no longer a slave, but it's a child. And if a child, then an heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by a son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing kills the spirit quite as effectively as fear. It is a slow poison that draws all joy out of life. It will warp bit by bit our perception of reality, our understanding of ourselves as graced individuals created in love by God. Fear robs the future of hope. As we stand on the threshold of a new year, we are certain to be experiencing a mixture of feelings, one of which is fear or trepidation. What will the future bring? Will I succeed in my endeavors? Will I find work? Will I pass my exams? Will I get into university? Will I get that bank or bursary that I need? I don't feel safe in South Africa anymore. What should I do? Possibly your fear is a deeper and more existential one. Did he do something to me at the party while I was drunk? Am I pregnant? What would people think of me if they knew I was gay? Would anybody notice if I weren't around anymore? Mary, whose motherhood we celebrate today, was not a stranger to fear. 
She also faced an uncertain future as a young, unmarried, and pregnant woman. She lived as a refugee in Egypt, fearing for the life of her son. When Joseph died, she faced a precarious future as a widow. And her life became even more difficult when her only son died. Mary knew fear. She had lots of reasons to be afraid. But in the end, she decided to not live in fear, but rather to live in hope. I want to share a quote from an underappreciated philosopher and visionary. There are two basic motivating forces, fear and love. When we are afraid, we pull back from life. When we are in love, we open to all that life has to offer with passion, excitement, and acceptance. We need to learn to love ourselves first in all our glory and our imperfections. If we cannot love ourselves, we cannot fully open to our ability to love others or our potential to create. Evolution and all hopes for a better world rest in the fearless and open-hearted vision of people who embrace life. All well, that underappreciated visionary was John Lennon. Another famous John wrote a book that you're all familiar with. John the Beloved wrote in his 16th chapter, I've told you all these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We often think that being blessed by God means a life without problems. We think that the followers of Christ should win the Powerball and Lotto every day. But that's not what's been promised by God. God promises us His enduring presence. He promises us ultimate victory over the challenges that face us. And that's the reason why we choose hope over fear. In the book of Numbers, God gives Moses and Aaron a blessing for them to pray over the people. It was a time of great uncertainty for the Jewish people. It was a time of existential threat, a time of wandering in the desert. And this blessing that the Lord gave to them to, to give to God's people was to give the people encouragement, to remind them that they did not journey alone, that with God there was peace. And so I'd like to end our reflection today with the blessing that Aaron prayed over the people of God. May it increase your hope and bring you God's peace. And so, dear friends, we pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you his peace. And now we profess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary, let us welcome the year of our, our Lord, 2023, by turning to God in our fervent prayer. That those who serve the church will know God's gracious love in their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of governments and all peoples of the earth will know God's peace and justice in their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who face the future with anxiety will know God's consolation in their fears. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who are called to live as the children of God will know God's blessing in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will know God's salvation in their eternal home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis that educators may be credible witnesses, teaching fraternity rather than competition and helping the youngest and most vulnerable above all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, by the help of Mary's prayers, keep us faithful in your service during this new year that you have given us. And let our words and actions give glory to your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this prayer to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And may we love us all one, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, the Lord himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Let God, God be pleased with this we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquities. Cleanse me from our sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Almighty God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the most holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed, ever-Virgin Mary. 
for by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth for the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take the soul of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, with Buti Tlachale, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, for it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, 
You said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And to share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say, Lord, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have received this heavenly sacrament with joy. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. The blessing is in three parts. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. 
May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance and hope, and perseverance and love with holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.